let's see. You know, we, we have most memorable moment in orbit. I think you have all the technological things you do, the robotics, the spacewalks, the you know, doing transfer, looking at experiments. But I think for me on the first flight in 2008 with uh, Dr. Whitson and crew up in, on the space station, it was the moment that she said, okay, we're gonna have dinner over in the service module. And we all love to eat, you know. You guys bring the vegetables, we'll have the meat. And we all congregated around the table, you know, French, German, Russian, Asian American, African American, first female commander. We're having this meal in space. And we're going around the planet every 90 minutes, 17,500 miles per hour. And you look out the window and you're going over Afghanistan or China or, or these places that there's strife or all kinds of things going on. And we're sitting up here with people that we used to fight with. And so when you think about how transformative that moment was, it was that we're all working together as one civilization for human exploration. So having a meal in space, I call it the space smorgasbord. Uh, sharing meals with people that you used to fight with was, I think, one of the most inspiring moments in my life. You know how um, Eskimos have like maybe 30 different shades of white to describe the texture of the snow for an igloo? You probably need 50 different shades of blue to describe the water in the Caribbean because the blues are just so intense. And I, you know, I have a few definitions or words for to describe color, but you can't do it justice with the vocabulary that we have for looking at the blue, the turquoise, the indigo, the azure, I mean, just incredible colors. So I think that was something that wasn't, you know, you don't think about color. I mean, I think about, you know, sunrise, sunset, the blackness of space and the snow-capped mountains, but the blue of the water was just so stunning. sitting there and they're counting down to about five minutes and they're saying, okay, it's looking pretty good, we're gonna launch today. And then it's the three, two, one, and then the, uh, the mains light and you know, they're moving, you do the twang, you go forward and you come back. And as soon as you come back off the twang, those SRVs kick in and it's like infinite acceleration. You know, you, you don't, you know, you think of a, a fast sports car and you're going 100 miles an hour, and you accelerate up to 100 miles an hour and you're pinned in your seat and you're, but this was like, I mean, 100,000 times more intense than that because, you know, granted, we're only doing three Gs at the maximum uh, acceleration, but still, you just feel like it's infinite. And you're pinned into your seat, you feel three times your weight on your chest, and you're hard to breathe, you're laboring to breathe a little bit, and then, you know, the SRBs come off, and so the load gets a little lighter, and you, you're like, wow, okay, we're, we're heading to space. I'd say it's the, uh, that, that initial jolt and then seeing the planet leaving you at a rapid pace was just so awe-inspiring. Yeah, I think the landing, you know, you're, you're coming back in the atmosphere and you're starting to build up the G's and you saw this plasma coming over the top of the orbiter and you're thinking, wow, that's, that's really hot. Back and lower in the atmosphere and you're starting to get some G's on you. And then, you know, all the muscles that you didn't have to really use in space, now you're having to fight against the resistance of the suit as well as the gravitational pull. And now we're starting to come over, you know, Central America and coming up the coast and heading to Florida. And, you know, you're just traveling so fast going around the planet. And it was like, wow, we're coming home. You land, um, you hit the ground, and then the vehicle starts heating up. You get pretty hot. You start just fl flipping switches and eventually you come out. But it was just, Awesome teamwork, working together, people on the ground, um, watching the planet as you're coming back home. Hard to describe again, you know, just fantastic. And I think with the space experiences, with working with people from all around the world, one of the things we can do is inspire. And I think if a child is not inspired, even if a teacher is not inspired, a teacher has to be inspired to inspire a student. So our, our charter is to inspire both teachers and students and also lifelong learners because that is really what's going to help fuel and continue to carry the message of exploration, curiosity, and discovery. So I thought that I had that piece of me to add to the mix to allow us to help inspire the next generation. How do we put all this into this pot? We got the meat, the vegetables, the spices to make this thing work and to get a kid to take a take a little sip of this and take a little bite of this and say, wow, I want to be an explorer. Wow, I want to be an astronaut. Wow, 
I want to be a scientist that's developing the next cure for cancer. Wow, I want to be the engineer that builds this new vehicle to take us to Mars. That's what we want to do, collectively, with the nation and the world. Uh, you know, when I, when I was a, an engineer at NASA Langley, I was working there for 10 years, um, when a friend of mine said, you'd be a great astronaut. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, I never, I never really, I worked at Langley, you know, NASA, but I never really thought about the space program. It's something that I could do. Because growing up, I didn't really have, I didn't really have aspirations of that. I love math and science, but never really saw people that looked like me and, you know, saw space as an option, didn't have a military crew cut and flew high performance jets and all of those things. But, um, you know, it was after he told me this that another friend of mine got into the Corps that year that I didn't apply. So I said to myself, well, if that knucklehead can get in, <laughs> I can get in. But it was one of the best things I could have ever done with my life because it's, I've, it's opened so many doors from the standpoint of allowing access to kids and, and teachers. Let them see they can do or be anything they put their minds to. So I would never have imagined of being here today, coming off of two shuttle missions and now being the Associate Administrator for Education. But I think the things that I've done in my past have aligned me and got me ready to be here so that I could talk to you today about how we inspire the next generation of explorers.